Good morning once again. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme, we gonna be all right. An empty refrigerator and a hungry heart. We gonna be all right. The other day a friend came over and she declared she couldn't understand why everyone had so much food in their refrigerator. She admitted when she goes home to her refrigerator, you can always see through to the back. It was confusing to her where all this food was coming from in people's refrigerators. She even cracked on us saying, I can't tell hard times looking at folks' refrigerators. I must confess in moving and downsizing from a big refrigerator to a smaller refrigerator, suddenly my refrigerator looks very full. But I keep coming back to my friend's assertion of the barrenness of her own refrigerator. I wonder if there are people who have bare refrigerators. I wonder if there are people who have rigid refrigerators with not much in them. <clears throat> I wonder if, metaphorically speaking, empty refrigerator speaks to the condition of some people's lives. Amen. One member was talking to me about how much need there is in our community and world. We simply have more folks in need in 2023. Empty refrigerators, you might call them. We have more folks with their hands out. Empty refrigerators. We have more folks with real problems. I don't know what we had yesterday, but they sure seem real today. Empty refrigerators. This month, our special offering is to assist those who are in need financially. But people today, when they call me up, they're coming needing their whole utility bill paid. Empty refrigerators. People today need car note payments. People coming today need help finding a job that can sustain them. By the way, the minimum wage has not increased in 14 years. When folks reach out today, their needs are greater. The discrepancy between the have and the have-nots is increasing. Post-COVID, the Pew Research says overall Americans are taking a dim view of the future. 80% of Americans are dissatisfied with the way things are going in our country. The five most important problems identified, and these are ranked. Number one, the government. Number two, the economy. Number three, immigration. Number four, the high cost of living. And five, crime violence. And if we go on to the next two, the federal budget deficit and gun control. But today I'm not just talking about physical needs, but spiritual, emotional, and mental. Perhaps we find it harder to be there for someone else because of the emptiness that exists in our own lives. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus receives the news that John is dead, but not just dead. I mean, like, really, this feels like rated X material, so I want to warn you. It's Herod's birthday, and for his birthday, he granted one wish to the daughter of Herodias. Her wish was to have John beheaded. So Herod obliges and has John beheaded, and he has his head bought in on a silver platter. This seems a bit much for me. The girl takes the platter and gives it to her mother with the head of John on it. Jesus gets the news that his colleague, his rider died ace coon buddy, has been beheaded. Jesus gets this news about John, the man who baptized him, the man who announced his ministry, the man who got him, the man who was excited about what he proposed to the future. And Jesus takes a retreat. In the last month, I have been astounded by the loss of life due to violence. I have gone to funerals and had to watch folks so weighed down in absolute grief. But nothing took me lower than hearing Imani Robertson, dad, share the loss of his daughter this past week. To hear a grown man as he utters saying goodbye to his daughter crying makes us hungry for justice. And even though he says he's not going to break, 
anyone can see that he's breaking, that he's broken. And you know that this man is hungry for justice. There's a real emptiness in our world. And at some point, even if your refrigerator has food, you have to feel the impact of the emptiness in our world. It has to tug at you. It has to touch your heart. It has to weigh on you. When Jesus returns from taking a moment to catch his breath, the crowd is there. D. Mark Davis of the Left Behind exegetical series says, this was not just a hungry crowd. This was not just a hungry crowd, but a dispirited one. Jesus had just learned of John's death, and it is believed the crowd was coming into that news too. Jesus had taken some time to process the news, and he found in his grief he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only one hurting. You aren't the only one dealing with pain. You're not the only one going through the fire. You aren't the only one struggling financially. You aren't the only one who can't get out of bed in the morning. You're not the only one frustrated by the injustice in our criminal court system. You're not the only one with more questions than answers. You're not the only one in search of a better life. You're not the only one who's stretched and stressed, blessed and fast. You're not the only one trying to make meaning of your life. You're not the only one looking in perhaps what seems like an empty refrigerator. One of the beauties of this passage is not the miracle of food, but the miracle of people. You can give us artificial intelligence, and I'm trying to figure out still all of what that means. You can give us faster internet. You can give us convenience. You can give us TV shows and new episodes. You can give us new models with bells and whistles. You can give us door delivery. You can give us ease. You can give us one day service, but nothing in the technological world and the world of capitalism replaces human connection. That thing where we see one another I see you, you see me, that thing where we touch one another, that thing where we listen to one another, that thing where we hold on to one another, that thing where we lean into one another, that thing where we say to one another, the peace of Christ, may it be with you. Nothing replaces human connection. Jesus came out of his time alone, heavy in grief, and there before him were thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people and touched hearts. He touched hearts. He touched despair. He touched people stricken with grief. He, he had a human connection. Out of compassion, he does indeed what he couldn't say in words, because sometimes there just are no words in the vocabulary. He began to minister to them. He began to heal. The man, heavy in grief, begins to minister to those with empty refrigerators and hungry hearts. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. An older book with a bitter perspective entitled, All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. What the author is saying is all I really needed to know to lead a meaningful life. I learned early on and not in graduate school, not later down the road. I learned everything I needed to know in kindergarten. Can I share a few of them with you today? Y'all say yes. <laughs> One, share everything. Hmm, play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your mess. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush the toilet. Warm cookies and milk are good. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. And no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it's best to hold hands and stick together. By the way, one of the first songs we learned back in kindergarten was, 
Yes, Jesus loves me. I don't know what songs were you guys thinking. I see your lips move, and I'm hoping you're saying the same song. Early on, we were told God loves us. We were told about a God that walks with us and talks with us and about the amazing grace and mercy that would come our way. You can arrive in despair for sure. Open your refrigerator and wonder, what are we going to eat tonight? Have you ever thought that? Like, what are we going to eat tonight? But there's something in this story that reminds us that even if we show up hungry, we will be fed. Even if we are in despair, there is something about community that nourishes the body and spirit. And even when it's necessary to take some time for self-knowing, when you return, the community will be there. And it's perfectly okay and necessary sometime to leave people and be alone. But don't stay forever, because it's important, that human connection. I want to honor today that though we worship together, often our own journey, Monday through Saturday, takes different streets. I want to honor that though you all look beautiful, there's so much more to who you are than meets the eye. I want to honor that life gives us sugar, but sometimes life straight up gives us bitter lemons. I want to honor that life sometimes is just not fair. I want to honor that it's chaotic out there in those streets and that violence touches us all. I want to honor the emptiness that we sometimes feel in our own lives. I want to honor how hard it is to show up for someone else when you feel the emptiness in your own life. And I want to say it's going to be all right. We're going to be all right. We are going to be just fine. There's this photographer, and he goes around to graduations, and he takes pictures for a living. He loves to figure out which kids belong to which parents. It's not really hard. So this dad walks in late and sits down, and he notices one kid waving at the dad. Oh, that must be his kid. And then he notices another kid waves at him. And this continues for some time. It's often so easy to tell which kid belongs to which parent, but he's like, I don't know which kid is this dad. And then he thinks to himself, ah, I bet you he's a teacher or he's a support staff person, and that's why several kids are waving at him. After the graduation, he continues to watch this man with curiosity, and he noticed he's handing out diplomas to the kids, and he's like, okay, he's definitely a staff person. But upon further looking, because he's still curious, he noticed that the dad is not really passing out diplomas. He's holding one of his own, and he's taking pictures with the other kids. The puzzle still seems incomplete to him because he can't quite place this man and what's his role in this graduation. He eventually learns that this dad lost his son in the last year and it, he's there to pick up the diploma of his deceased son. He learns that if this dad's son had been alive, he would have been graduating on this day. There isn't much in the dad's refrigerator. It's kind of bare. You can see to the back. But this dad still shows up. He shows up. He shows up for his son's friends, cheering them on and taking pictures with them after graduation. He shows up to the day. He shows up for his son. He shows up to receive his son's diploma. There ain't much in the refrigerator. And the photographer who takes these pictures goes home and he thinks about it. He beats himself up because he remembers he asked this dad which child was his. He finds a picture of the man's son and photoshopping as a photographer can do. He puts a picture, a picture he had taken of the dad and he adds the son. And in the picture after photoshopping, you see the dad with his hands on his son's back, with his son holding his diploma. 
We know from listening today that there is emptiness in that story. But seeing the dad, seeing the dad with his son hold that diploma, there's so much beauty as well. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. Can y'all say that with me? We gonna be all right. Okay, I hope y'all believe. <laughs> we are gonna be all right, amen.